Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm an On One Photo Raw 2021, and I have a photo that I took in Paris. Let me just show you the photo. Um, I saw that old car sitting there and these ladies talking. I have no idea if it was their car or not, and it just screamed vintage to me. I took the photo because the car is cool, Notre Dame. This was way before it burnt. I hope it's doing okay. I, you know, I haven't heard about it in the news, to be honest, but this was like in 2016. It was early morning. There was nobody out. It's a great time to be in, in European cities, in my, any city, frankly, uh, with a camera because people aren't out. Anyway, um, I saw this, and with that little car there, I was like, it just looks like a vintage postcard kind of feel. So I thought I would come in and kind of create that sort of look. So I've already cropped it, and what I'm going to do is a few things here in Develop, and then I'm going to go and... Uh, create kind of a vintage, you know, kind of look basically here in on one. There's a lot of great tools that you can use here to do that. So I'm going to just kind of make these edits here in develop. I am going to take the highlights down. They're really bright. That helps t tame that, uh, that blue quite a bit. Uh, and then temperature and tint. Let's see. Yeah, those are about the same. So really simple, straightforward stuff, basically just controlling the light. If I turn that off, that's what it looked like before. And there we go, especially those highlights. If you look like here along the edge of Notre Dame and along the edge of those buildings, and now that highlight recovery just was fantastic. It's one of the reasons I like to shoot raw. It just helps you pull back things uh, so, so well. I'm gonna start with a local adjustment here. And what I wanna do is just basically darken the top of the photo a little bit. So I'm gonna go grab this gradient mask. I'm in, let's see, I wanna do linear bottom. And I just wanna pull it in something about like that. I, I don't know exactly. And uh, I am going to adjust the exposure amount. That's too much. So maybe something about like that. If I turn this off, there it is before. And there it is now just basically darken that top half of the photo a little bit. Simple, straightforward, easy to do with a local adjustment. And the rest of this is just effects. I feel like I've got my basic canvas set. Now I want to kind of go have fun with some of the tools that here uh, that exist here and on one. So I'm going to start with split toning. And that's a place I often start when I'm trying to create kind of a vintage look. For me, this is going to just require a little bit of warming up. So maybe a 49 or so there and maybe a little bit more on the saturation. And this is for the highlights. I think I'm going to go actually to about 50 there. And shadows, I'm going to do uh, a little bit of a warming as well. The hue is going to be about a 14 or so. And the amounts at 20, I'm going to pull that up to about 30. So I think that had a nice impact on the photo, very blue beforehand, and that's okay. You know, it's easy to fix as we've just done, but there it is before. And with the split toning, it's, it's a little bit warmer. Um, all the colors aren't gone, but they are muted, which to me kind of vintage photos uh, definitely have a little bit more of a muted kind of color look to them. So I'm good with that. I'm now going to go get a LUT. And there's so many LUTs built in. If you go over here to the more, you can just see that there's all these LUTs. But I ended up going with this one called Classic. I just think that looks so good. Uh, I am going to increase the contrast, though, to about a 20. And I'm also actually going to bring up the saturation also to about a 20. And again, that was just personal preference. So if I turn off the LUT, there it is before. Still a little bit blue, despite what we did in split toning. But you know, better than it was before split toning. So the split toning helped me get rid of some of that blue, but then the LUT actually helped a little bit more. And I like using LUTs, especially when I'm doing kind of different creative things. I don't use them a lot of my normal edits, but sometimes they're really nice touch uh, in certain photos. So, and, and as I said, there's a lot of them built in here to on one, so that just comes in handy. Speaking of things that are built in, textures. I really like textures. Years ago, I would never use them, and now I use them fairly often just because I think there's so many cool options. And especially here in On One, once again, I mean, you have all these different kind of textures you can use. I actually ended going, uh, ended up here with Warm Concrete Subtle, which you can see there. I just think that looks really nice. Um, I am pulling the opacity down a little bit. I'm going to pull that down a little bit more, something about like that. But this texture, I mean, just went from there to there. Again, it warms it up a little bit, but it puts that texture in there, which gives it that kind of old vintage look, either a vintage photo or vintage kind of postcard kind of photo look but I, th I just think that looks really nice. Now I want to kind of go in and balance the light a little bit. So that's where Tone Enhancer, it's just a great tool, it comes in so handy. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a bump in contrast. So maybe about like that, I'm going to pull down the highlights just a tad. So, you know, maybe 20, 25, something like that. And I'm also going to pull down the shadows a little bit and something, you know, maybe a little bit like that. I'm just creating a little bit more contrast, moving the light around just a tiny bit. It's not a huge deal. There it is before. 
and there it is after. So not a massive deal, but a little bit darker in the shadows, a little bit more contrast, creates a little bit more of that difference between the brighter and the darker spots there in the photo. So there it is a little bit brighter overall, and there a little bit better contrast. And the last thing I'm gonna get is borders. And once again, a lot of options in on one. I love, they have just so many options built in. It defaults to the simple white square. I'm actually gonna change that. I'm gonna go over here to the options. Again, you can see all these different options. And I ended up going with antique rounded. Let me put that on there. I felt like that kind of matched the vibe I was going for. The blend mode is normal, which defaults to. I'm actually gonna pull the opacity down to about a 90. It's allowing some of that underneath uh, to kind of shine through. I am gonna increase the scale just a little bit to, uh, oops, excuse me, uh, the other way, like a negative seven, so decrease it, I guess, technically. And fit image of two, I think works just fine. Let me show you the border before and after. There it is before the border, and there it is with the border. And that's really my whole workflow. Every one of these effects, I generally go and mask them in. In this case, I use them all globally. Didn't matter at all. The only masking I did was on that local adjustment where I wanted to darken the sky. Let me show you what that did to the photo. There it is before, and there it is after. It actually, in the final result, looks kind of good both ways. I like it a little bit darker, but if you didn't, then you know, not something you would have to do, of course. But all these effects combined, I think really helped me create that vintage look. So if I turn them off, let me just show you kind of what the photo looked like. There we go, really blue, all that kind of stuff. But then split tone starts to warm it up. The LUT helps a little bit more. The texture definitely warms it up, as well as adding the texture itself tone enhancer to really balance out some of the light and the contrast, and then a border just as a little bit of a finishing touch to create kind of that vintage postcard look. And that's my whole edit, my friends. If I show you the before, that's what the photo looked like. Of course, I did crop it 16 by nine, but there it is beforehand, and then there it is, final product. That's a quick kind of fun vintage effort here in on one. So many powerful things like LUTs that are included, textures that are included, borders that are included. You can just combine all these different things in so many interesting and unique ways to come up with whatever kind of creation you wanna come up with. That's what I came up with, and frankly, the vintage look here was inspired by that car, which is just kinda of cool. I saw that and I was like, oh God, I was up on the bridge um, over here and I saw them and I saw that car and I had to run. I was like, I gotta get a photo of that car in front of Notre Dame before somebody takes off with it. So again, don't know if it was their car, don't care. I got there in time, took the photo, made it into a vintage postcard. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you're staying safe, taking care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon with my next video. Have fun editing out there. See you soon, and adios.